tonight. 12 bowlers from across the country, ranging from pros to amateurs, beginners to legends, men and women, compete in the ultimate Survivor Showdown. One shot per round. The lowest score eliminated. Only one can win the glorious Duke Trophy and $60,000. The PDA LBC National Championship Clash starts now on FS1. Bayside Bowl is rocking. We are ready to go in one of our favorite places in the PBA, Portland, Maine, for the 2023 PBA LBC National Championships Clash. 12 competitors are here today. We started with over a 1,000 players that competed across seven weekends this summer, and today they come for a one ball per round flash showdown. This is going to be a blast and it's great to be with all of you. I'm John Fanta, joined by Bowling Royalty, 40-time PBA Tour champ, Norm Duke is here. And the Hall of Famer, Randy Peterson is here as well. So guys, what a unique, unique event in the PBA. How so? Man, it, it's a great event because it affords all skill levels to compete for huge money. I mean, if you look at the 12 players on today's show, You've got a youth bowler, 17-year-old. You've got an army vet. You've got men and women professionals. And you have everything in between. And the format is perfect. One ball, low count is out. We move down the line until we get down to our final player who's gonna win 60 grand in that beautiful Duke Trophy. The reason why I love the format, it's simple. Look, Norm, we played a lot of golf together. Yeah, we have. If I tee it up against Tiger, 18 holes, I got zero chance. Zero. None. One hole? He pumps it out of bounds. I hit it down the middle. I bunt it in front of the green, get it up and down. I make four, he makes double, I win. Hey, if that's he pumps it out of bounds in front of you, I'm betting on you. That's, that's what sure. this format allows. Don't be surprised if we have an upset today. Yeah, and then the PBA comes in with this trophy. The Duke, what a great honor. And in fact, they made me more desirable because it comes, as John said, with $60,000. Incredible vibe here in Portland, and you have Players ranging from your PBA exempt competitors, three of those, to men's and women's handicap. We have all different ages from 17 years of age all the way into your 60s. Across these 12 competitors, it's going to be phenomenal. Kimberly Pressler is also with us. She'll have each competitor in this first round, and she's with our women's handicap representative, Belinda Maple, right now. Thanks, John. Congratulations, Belinda, on making it here. So yesterday when we were talking in the pre-show interviews, you just had such passion about bowling. Where does that come from? Um, I've been bowling ever since I was little, since four years old. And I know the joy it's brought me in my life and the success that it's helped me. And um, I just want to inspire the youth and ensure that bowling has a place in the future for everyone. I absolutely love that. It looks like this Portland crowd is ready for you. Good luck today. We'll get us started. Here's a look at the rules. All 12 bowlers rolling one shot. And the thing about it is it's not just about, it's not about strikes today. Not about spares because you only have one shot. The lowest score gets eliminated. Yeah, nine or better is huge right now. I, I've done this format and I'm thinking nine or better at least the first five rounds. Absolutely, man. Hit the head pin. Hit the one in front of you. It's not that easy to do either because you're scared to death. Hold your head, hold your head, hold your head. Yeah, baby, yeah! Yes, Army vet, Belinda Maple. Belinda's passion, the energy, it's infectious. She really captivated us yesterday. She's working on a book right now. As you said, she's an Army vet. She is a superstar. I tell you what, she is also adorable. And when you talk to her, when you say affectious, it is everything bowling, and I love it. She's inspirational. Yes, she is. All right, you're familiar with this name if you're a PBA fan. Kimberly is with Tom Doherty. So, Tom, you are a major champion, so you know what it takes to win, but today you only get one ball in order to advance. Is it a different type of mindset for you coming into an event like this? I was, I was feeling pretty good until you started talking to me, so now it's a... Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, 
I apologize. Yeah. So I got that on me, and then I got I got I got Belinda who already threw a strike, which I knew she was going to do that. So uh, I got nothing to lose. Let's do it. Let's do it. Right. Good luck. Uh, I, I'm sorry, uh, John. Who did you say was up? Tom Doherty. Yeah, and if Rob Stone was here, he would say who? <laughs> <laughs> They've got this thing going, Rob and, and Tom, and it's hilarious. Oh, by the way, Tom, Rob's watching as well. <laughs> of course, Stoner is. Here he is. Tom Doherty, one of those three PBA exempt competitors. Yep, major champion, Tom Doherty. Back yeah. to back strikes to start. I don't want to sit in the yeah, couch. And if you notice, he has got a lot of experience. He said to himself, all I want to do is post this shot up. If I do, I'm going to hit the pocket. And he's putting pressure on now. AJ, you were coming off your first win of a PBA Tour title. So how do you take that momentum and carry it into a win here today? Uh, in sports, you hear a lot about momentum. Uh, I got a lot of momentum on my sides, but a uh, little different uh, environment, and uh, I've always loved coming here and bowling in Bay side. so I feel like it's a little bit of home, home field advantage, but uh, we're just going to have some fun and throw some good shots. Good luck. Thank you. A.J. Johnson, what do you see in his game? What I see is a, a newly crowned champion. He just came back from Sweden winning the Lucky Larson championship out there, and... You know what it's like winning your, for the first time ever. Everyone was like, well, when's AJ ever going to win? Well, guess what? They can't say that anymore. No, they can't. And Martin Larson has uh, evolved that tournament to where it is now a PBA title. And it is AJ Johnson's first. Congratulations. As you said, guys, Belinda Maple, Tom Doherty, the first two of these 12 competitors. Again, lowest score is eliminated. Those two are in the clubhouse looking pretty. Can AJ follow them? He does! to start the National Championship Clash. Well, somebody's going to miss, and I promise you. So these three, I think, have advanced around two. Are you sure somebody's going to miss? I just <laughs> know they are. I know you can't throw a 12-bagger with 12 uh, different people. I, I, all right, I'll, I'm going to go with you on that one. Let's go back to Kimberly, who's got Jake Peters. So, Jake, you have won in this building actually last year on a format just like this, but you are now following nothing but strikes. What are your expectations today? I don't really have any expectations, except I want to stay out of that couch. They're back here talking about 12 strikes, so I don't want to be the first, but uh, having experience in this format lets me realize how hard it really is to succeed. So, for me, it's just stay focused and try to make as many good shots and stay alive. Good luck. Thank you. Here's the interesting dimension of Jake Peters in this competition, RP. He won the PBA League All-Star Clash last year. Yeah, same exact format. The one thing that you want to avoid, Norm, is that couch. You know, you got to sit over there if you have a low count. I've been in that couch before, yeah. and it's a lonely spot. Yeah, the couch of misery. Sometimes uh, two people will tie, and they'll, they'll get to the couch at the same time. That is, it's at least more comforting. Yeah, way. at least you have company. And by the way, if we're tied with the lowest score, we'll have a roll-off. Peters! Wow! Norm, it's on the table. It is on the table. Pretty They're good. They're running the table. Pretty good so far, guys. Staying alive. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful shot here by Jake Peters. Splits the 1-3, all 10 in the pit. Yeah, there's, there's a sigh of relief. The first four competitors, all strikes. I knew it was going to be. Kimberly Pressler continues yeah, with Danielle. Danielle, so you have competed here at Bayside in previous years many times. What's it like to be back here in front of this Portland crowd in this new and exciting event? Oh, it's unbelievable. I love being here in Portland. I'm so excited to get out on those lanes in front of this crowd and hopefully put on a good show. All right, good luck to you. Danielle McEwen, U.S. Women's <laughs> Open champion in 2019. Eight PWBA Tour titles. Two majors. Yeah, and she's also been on Motown Muscle in the PBA League yep. with Del Ballard, so she's got a lot of experience in this facility. Let's see how it works out for her. McEwen. Ooh. Couch potato. Oh, the mahogany of misery. <laughs> there it is. To the couch goes Danielle McEwen, the only non-strike in our national championships clash. The first four with strikes. 
Hey, after our first break, we have a big announcement that you do not want to miss. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Want to move fast? With Same Day Mortgage, you can go from application to approval in as fast as one day to get you closing on the home of your dreams in just 10 days. Learn more at rate.com. And by Bolero, the number one place to bowl, party, eat, and play with over 340 locations nationwide. Head to bolero.com today to find a center near you. There it is. Beautiful. That beautiful sculpted piece of art right there. Uh, uh, about one of the greatest icons our sport's ever known. Guy sitting next to us. And it weighs about 40 pounds, dude. That thing is solid bronze. As it, as it should be. <laughs> Norm Do, Brandy Peterson, with me, John Fanta. Registration. We told you about the big announcement for the 2024 PBA LBC National Championships is now open to bowlers of all skill levels. The PBA LBC National Championships is heading to a new location outside Chicago, Illinois, and includes two new junior divisions. You can compete in singles as well as optional doubles and team events. Even combine your scores with the pros. Enter today at PBA.com. Hey, folks, do you like money? Don't wait. Let's go. Let's talk oil pattern today's Brunswick oil pattern. All right, 42 feet in length, and you already see where the players are going to try to play, and that's inside, just left of that track area. The bigger the hand, the farther inside those players are going to play this pattern. Yeah, but they're going to get it to the exact same spot down lane, Absolutely. and it's going to move to the pocket from that spot. As you can see, both of those lines coming together down lane. And that spot Norman's referring to, that's called the break point. We told you about the couch of shame. Danielle McEwen is there now. There's not much shame normally in a nine, but she's got a nine, and she's the low score right now with seven competitors left in round one. We turn to the back half of round one. Carlton Chambers is with Kimberly Presley. Carlton, yesterday when we talked in our pre-show interviews, we talked about the fact that you have a possibility of winning $60,000 today, and you said, yeah, that would be great, but there was something more precious that you wanted to walk away with. What was that? The Duke. We want the Duke. We want the Duke. I, I know what bowling means to Norm, and I know what Norm means to all the PBA players, to just me, the whole world. We know what Norm means for bowling, so that would be awesome. And plus, 60,000, it comes and goes. The trophy stays in the mantle forever. Oh, I love it. Good luck to you. Wow, how do you not want to root for Carlton now? What do we call him, Sebo? Sebo. I tell you what, uh, Carlton and I have spent some time together. We played the T-Ray Cup. Last year, it was one of the greatest moments of my life playing golf with him, riding in the same cart. He pulled it out at the end, and I'll never, ever forget that day. Here we go, see boat. That is just so cool. Yes, 60,000 is on the line, but that trophy that we came out of break with, that's, that's what Carlton Chambers wants. That's forever. There it is. Oh, he's going to oh. He's going to jo join Danielle on the sofa of suffering. And how long is that couch? We may need a few more seats here. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh no, you can fit you can fit uh, some more bodies on there. That unique backswing of Carlton, it's because he actually broke his right arm not once, not twice, but three times. Let's turn to a Hall of Famer. Yes, we have a PBA Hall of Famer competing in this event. Kimberly is with Lenny Boris Jr. We sure do. So Lenny, they just talked about the fact that you were just indicted to the PBA Hall of Fame, but you're also full time on the PBA 50 tour. Mm -hmm. But this event is unlike anything that you've ever participated in. So how did you prep for it today? Well, I didn't really prep much. I just practiced a lot. But uh, <laughs> hopefully uh, just try to get it to the one three, get nine or 10 down and try to stay in this thing because they they come out smoking here so far. So I love the honesty. Good luck to you. This man has given his life to bowling. He's one of the greatest people you'll ever meet, whether it's inside of bowling or not. But Lenny Porsche is just a phenomenal human being, and, and it was great to be at his induction ceremony earlier this year. Yeah, now to all those senior players that I bowled with their eight or nine years, he had my number. He just beat me every time. Couldn't beat the guy. Couldn't beat him. Here we go. Celebrate 50 years of bowling this year. 
Letty starts with a strike. Yeah, big shocker there, huh, Norm? Yeah, you know, they're never that loud. They're never that uh, just <laughs> bolsterous. No, but they just, they they just all go fall. down. <laughs> that hurt. They just go down. He said that hurt. You know, Lenny is 61 years old. He had to sit for a while. <laughs> Look at him. What a great guy. Way to go, Lenny. Now let's turn to one of our three open classic representatives out of St. Clair Bowl. Kimberly's with Derek Kindick. So Derek, you're an IT guy. You work in data engineer. But uh, this is the first time you are under the bright lights of FS1. Has it sunk in yet that you are on national television right now? Uh, yeah, it has, <laughs> if you can't tell with all this. All right, well, what's your strategy for today? Stay behind the foul line. That is a dang good strategy. Good luck to you. Oh, that's great. Hey, we both remember that. I guess yeah, we right. were just trying to stay behind oh. the line early. That's all we wanted. Oh, my goodness. This is part of the amazing thing about this competition. He actually bowled to qualify for this event on June the 10th out in Wisconsin. He didn't formally find out because you posted scores over seven weekends, different players. Yeah. He didn't find out that he was going to be here until July 18th. He waited over a month. Yep. Good wait. Got to beat nine to avoid the couch. Got some hand too, buddy. That's plenty right there. How about that shot first time on national television? Pretty good. No couch necessary. <laughs> the wings can wait. That's what makes this format so beautiful is that's the lead right there. Yep. Yeah. Congratulations. You guys just talked about it. The weight, right? The weight that it takes. It might be 10 minutes, but it feels like an hour, these competitors have said. And let's go back to another lady competing. She comes from England, Verity Crawley. Not only did she come from England, but she just landed back in the States. So Verity, I got to ask you, has the jet lag hit you? It hits me in the evening and in the morning, but I'm ready to bowl. Oh, I love it. I love the confidence. Good luck to you. Thank you. One of the PWBA stars, and if you've never seen Verity Crawley throw it, you're in for a treat because she's got some kind of game. Yeah, she does. She has absolutely no flaws in her game. She spares great. She has a wonderful approach with perfect timing and she's got a great mental game and if she survives round one next time she is up guys i got a great story about verity verity crawley oh verified heading to round two what an angel look at her talk about the trip for being your best friend well it is on this shot right here verity she knows that she needs to get at least nine to join the folks on the couch. Eight, she's probably toast and she trips the four. She moves on to round two. We go from Verity Crawley. Folks, you saw Lenny Boras Jr., who's in his low 60s, all the way to a 17-year-old phenom, and he is a phenom. Trey Henriksmeyer, America, meet him. Not only is he a phenom, but you mentioned he was 17 years old, our youngest competitor. And yesterday in our interviews, you were nothing but calm, cool, and confident. So I got to ask you, how do you take those traits and apply that to an advancement here today? I'm um, really just trying to stick to my process, take it one shot at a time, and hopefully the pins fall down. See? Confidence. Good luck to you. I love this kid. In our interviews, this kid was just dynamite. And wait until you watch him throw it. He's a two-handed specialist. This kid has got a bright future on the PBA Tour. Yeah, not only that, I was live when he qualified in Milwaukee, and he had me at the first shot. You, he turned everyone's head in the building. Watch this guy. Being recruited by Wichita State and Mount Mercy. That's why Henrik Meyer. You know, it's so, so great about having Norm in the booth. After that ball went through the pins, Norm and I just turned our heads and looked at each other. They're like, wow. <laughs> yeah, I saw this for about six games straight, and man, does he have game. That's also has I, power. That's what all that power does for you, huh, Norm? Nine? Forget it. Get out of my face, seven pin. 
So Trey Henricksmeyer, the 17-year-old, is on to round two. Again, Danielle McEwen, Carlton Chambers, they're the two players tied with the low score right now of nine. If that low score holds, they'll have a roll off to see who advances and who goes home. Kimberly is with our second to last competitor, Liz Johnson. So Liz has 25 titles. 10 of them have been majors. But today you only get one shot. And right now the low score is a nine. You got a strike in you? Uh, I hope so. I'm just gonna have to make a good shot and try to hit the one three and hope they carry. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. You know, Norm, uh, we're not getting any younger, neither is Liz. She's been sitting for a long time. For a long, long time. And uh, there are no practice shots uh, from Belinda to Liz right now. This is tough. I know I'm a senior player. This is tough. But I'll tell you what, I'm on the Liz train. The winningest player in women's professional bowling from a major standpoint. She's one of the most majors ever. Ten. Ten. Yeah. A legend. Liz Johnson strikes it home. And she's heading to round two. And that is a complete sigh of relief that reflects the emotions of this event. That sigh of relief, it's so merited because you've been sitting there all that time. Yeah. And then she's like, oh, please don't make me sit that couch. Major champion, but even a better person is Liz Johnson. Her and I have a doubles tournament together. We have a victory. So will Danielle McEwen and Carlton Chambers have a roll off? or will they be moving on? There's only one left in round one. The pressure on men's handicap division representative Hunter Lawless. Kimberly's with him. So Hunter, yesterday in our pre-show interviews, uh, you told us that one of your biggest dreams is to become a pro bowler on the PBA tour. And currently you're going to culinary school. So I have to ask, when you become a pro, can your nickname be the chef? It definitely can, yes, for sure. Good luck to you. Hey, John, Norm, what do you think the chef's going to cook up with this next shot? <laughs> Randy, you said you want to have him over for, and, and not for dinner, he's going to make you dinner. Yeah, man, but, you know, I'm kind of an amateur chef, so anything he's got to say, any, any, any tips, advice he can give me, recipes, I'm in. Hunter Lawless. Look out. Oh, oh, oh. to the couch. And then there were three. We have a roll-off. Yes, we do. Hunter Lawless, Danielle McEwen, Carlton Chambers, ring that bell. Ring that bell. Oh boy. The infamous Bayside Bowl tie bell. Love it. So what's the emotion of this right now? They're scared to death. I mean, it's the same, <laughs> don't you, it's the same kind of mindset that you had before you threw no. your first shot, right? Hey, strike. And I, I, I'm probably going to move on. Yes, but beforehand, they're looking at nine or better. Now they're looking at only strikes. McEwen to start a roll-off. It's a second consecutive nine. Oh, boy. That's the bowling gods right there, because that was a, such a pure shot. All right, some more pressure now, guys, because Carlton knows if he strikes, he's moving on. Carlton Chambers, he's out of Detroit. He's worked at Ford for over two decades. He has so much respect for this sport and has talked about how much he wants that Duke trophy. But he's fighting for his life in round one. Needs a strike to advance to round two. Oh, are you kidding me? Wow. Well, we either have a roll off or a loser with Hunter here because. If he strikes, we have a roll off. Nine, we have a roll off. If he gets eight, he gone. The exact same scenario that we just saw less than two minutes ago. Now Hunter Lawless. Wait, hang on, Joe. If he gets eight, what happens? He gone. <laughs> Norm Duke bringing it. Lawless needs nine. Oh! He's on the round two. The chef puts some oil in the pan. Can you smell what the chef's cooking? Ring the bell! That wait was too long. All right, we're down to two. This is only the first round. I know, right? <laughs> Goodness. That ball has to look right there. Oh, boy, just enough. He knew he was looking at a bucket there for a while. Six, he gone. Danielle McEwen, <laughs> Carlton Chambers. It's turning into match play. Nines for 
them in their first two rolls. McEwen yep. with a strike. Yep. Now she knows what pressure's like. Yeah, and Sebo knows as well at right the, now. At the highest level. Oh, yeah. Carlton knows some pressure, but not at this level. Yeah, I think that she trumps him in, uh, in knowing what pressure feels like. Yeah. I mean, she's got major titles. She's been bowling on the, the men's tour, what, yep. five or six years while yep. the women's tour was AWOL. Yeah, she's hard to beat, too. All right, seat boat in the house. You know how bad he wants it. You saw it. Yep. He needs a strike. Does Carlton Chambers to survive and force another roll off? The pressure's on Carlton Chambers. No. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. No. Thank you for being here, Sebo. Great job, man. He wanted to give a shout out to his coach, Mark Baker. Yeah. Coach Banks. But what a great guy, man. Just could not deliver the strike. Three nines for Carlton Chambers and a fan favorite this week. He wanted that trophy so bad. You absolutely wanted that trophy and you came out here and you fought hard. Did you think that to get a nine you'd be kicked out? Uh, with these guys, the way they're throwing the ball? No, it's, it's, it's likely. It's possible. You have to be proud for coming here this far, but uh, what has this experience been like for you? Uh, it's always been a dream to bowl on TV. It may not be throwing a double for a title, but I'll take this and Hey, it's the best sport, best place in Portland. Yeah, but you also told us you have one more dream left, and that's to hit up the PBA 50 Tour. So we will be seeing you next year. Next year. PBA 50. Thank you, guys. Thank you. We'll see more Carlton Chambers, that's for sure, folks. One is gone. Eleven remain. Eleven for that Duke trophy for $60,000. Round two is next. Welcome back to the PBA LBC National Championships Clash. 12 competitors arrive to Bayside Bowl in Portland, Maine. 11 remain for the $60,000 prize in the Duke Trophy. The all new Undisputed is here. Skip Bayless is back, joined by NFL legends Richard Sherman, Michael Irvin, and Keyshawn Johnson. Undisputed weekdays at 9.30 Eastern, only on FS1. Back here in Portland, round two about to begin. Belinda Maple is such a great story. Passion personified in this sport. Take a look at her home center, Royal Z Lanes, and her favorite bullet, Parker Bloom III. We asked her why Parker, and she said, she's got the most beautiful form and style I've ever seen, and I want to try to, to mimic that in my game. And why wouldn't you? Right? I've been watching Parker for 42 years now. Never ceases to amaze me. Still at it. Yep. Her dad, Lord Byron Cambridge. He's the one who inspired her and got her into bowling. Look at this. Look at this. Wow. Belinda Maple came to play. Let's that, go. That smile. Let's go, Army Vet. No couch for you. Oh, she got that way wide and flip twirled it. Nice. Look at her. Oh, yeah. No couch. The Army vet. She talked about her journey, and she is, well, she's in a great spot to advance to round three. Good. Now here's Tom Doherty. A strike in round one. Four PBA Tour titles. And notice they've moved lanes as well, guys. Tommy. The 2021 PBA World Championship winner. A great career, but that's the art of this event. A great bowler could have a shot like this. As he heads over to the Davenport of disdain. <laughs> seven count for Tom Doherty right through the face, and he knows he's in trouble. Yeah, he's in trouble, but he's not locked out. We're talking uh, seven pins. Six is not hard to get when you're talking about, what, nine other players. That look says it all, though. He's got some pressure now. But I mean, Norm, come on. You know you got to beat seven. You got to breathe. You're, you're breathing a sigh of relief when you step up there, don't you think? Mm, I don't know. 
because it's so easy to get six in bowling. <laughs> I don't think there's any sigh of relief. AJ Johnson. That's some relief. He's heading to round three with a fist pump. Beautiful shot here by AJ Johnson. All come to recognize that posture at the foul line. He's a great athlete, you know, he uses his legs and he gets after it at the bottom of the swing. Strong kid, used to play quarterback in high school. Now yeah, Jake, he, now he Jake get, Peters. He just gets better and better too. Well, he's got confidence now yeah, too. Yeah, no that's, doubt. That's what winning does for you. Here's another guy riding some momentum, Jake Peters. When he won that All-Star Clash a year ago, he beat out Packy Hanrahan. And he's heading to round three. The experience of Jake Peters, he said, I don't know if it's a benefit or not. Feels like a benefit right now. Great start. Two-time Steve Nagy award winner, Jake Peters right there, threading the needle right through the one three for perfection. Yeah, Steve Nagy is a sportsmanship award, so all of us, we vote him in yearly. Danielle McEwen had Hell to out. win two roll-offs. This round a little easier for McEwen. Norm, a little up the gut right there? I know she pulled that ball. We've been watching her practice. She pulled that ball a couple of inches. Looked like maybe she mishit it a little bit, but it ended up dead flush. Judging. Next up, Lenny Norris Jr. The art of one shot. The beauty. Yeah, we watched Belinda right out of the gate. Throws the Brooklyn, gets the strike, misses the couch. Everybody's got a shot. The 2023 Hall of Fame inductee, Lenny Boris Jr. Oh, help. Yeah. Nine's enough, though. Safe. He's safe. He didn't like it when it left his hand, but it's good now. No, he hated that, and he knew it could just pick for it any breath, and it just held oh, just enough to keep him on our, no, excuse me, off the couch. Nine is good. Right now, Tom Doherty is looking for a little help. If nothing else, get into a roll-off, right? Yeah, every shot that's thrown that uh, that they, they move back to the seats, he gets closer and closer to his own being eliminated. He's only got five more chances. Only five left, and Doherty with those seven. He's the low score right now. Derek Kindig at a strike in round one. Make it two for Kindig. He's got a nice game, Norm. He, he gets does. It off, gets it off his hand nice. He does, and you know what? He's posting shots. Yeah. Almost like uh, A.J. Johnson is. And, of course, Jake Peters. <laughs> Did you see Doherty? <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Great hand here at the bottom of the swing. Look at that open hand release. A la EJ Tackett, Pete Weber. Nice rotation, plenty of revs. Rips the rack. Verity Crawley from England. Nine's enough, she's on to round three. Huge break, Norman. Mega break right there. She knew off her hand that that could get seven at any breath or worse. And she gets out with nine. She says, let me sit down right quick. Yeah, I mean, that could have been six, easy. Instead, she gets a nice break going through the nose, only leaving the three pin. Beautiful game here, look at this. That cup, bent elbow and wrist, the bottom. That's what creates the revs. Now this kid right here, Trey Henricks Meyer. 17 years of age. Oh no. Oh, no. Well, never hooked, no. never hooked. I don't think that Tom Doherty could get off that couch quick enough right there. <laughs> Tom Doherty is surviving. Here's Liz Johnson. Yeah, she's got a little more comforts coming up right now because she knows six is. She needs to beat six. And she does. That could have turned. It could have, yeah. No doubt about it. She didn't make her best shot, but six is a lot easier to beat than seven. And so now the 17-year-old, man, Henrik Smeyer has to sit and hope for a miracle. Poor Trey, it looked like he got caught up in that cliff or uh, over under wet dry ball reaction. He got it in just a little bit and that ball saw zero friction. It did, and that right lane has always been a little bit tighter, especially down lane, and he felt it right there. Hunter Lawless, he's got it. With a strike. Not a whole lot of down lane movement, but you know what, he's getting it done. So Trey Henricksmeyer, who said, us earlier this week, I'm wired to compete. 
He is heading home, but folks, he did earn $25,000 in scholarship money for winning the Open Classic Division at Bolero Wauwatosa in July. So he already has scholarship money heading towards his next destination, college, and Kimberly's with him. Trey, this didn't go the way that you were hoping it would go, but you still bowled well. But tell us about that shot when you got sick. Yeah, I just got a little early with my timing, got steep and didn't quite catch it at the bottom and it hydroplaned in the oil, so. Well, I don't, I don't know about you, but I think that uh, Tom Doherty looked super relieved that he didn't have to sit on that couch anymore. So I think that he should at least have to buy you something here from Bayside Bowl and they have amazing french fries, I'm just saying. They do, yeah. I don't know, overall good experience and just happy to be here, so. All right, thank you so much, and congratulations on your $25,000 you won here. Yeah, let's not forget, guys, he won $25,000. Yeah, and he gets some fries. Yeah. <laughs> we started with 12. 10 remain, folks. Who's going to win the inaugural Duke Trophy? We're just getting started. LBC National Championships Clash at beautiful Bayside Bowl in Portland, Maine. We've been coming to Maine for the last decade, and it has delivered the goods. Great crowds, amazing energy, and it's wonderful to be back in Portland. So we started with 12 competitors. Randy Peterson, Norm Duke, we have 10 remaining in this clash, and one of those 10 is a Hall of Fame inductee in Lenny Borish Jr. We'll have more on him in a little while, but let's enter round number three. And Belinda Maple, guys, has been unfazed. Yeah, she's two for two. If you get a strike, yeah, don't get on the couch. Oh, boy. Maple, look! Oh, my goodness. Hey, I'll take that. I know, I will do I'll right now. I'll take that. Now the players are flipped back over to that left lane. And for the pros, they know what that left lane's giving him. Yeah, right? and uh, for you people watching, the left lane, the one that Tom Doherty's about to bowl on, is going to hook about four boards more to pros minimum, maybe five or six sometimes. So the pros have to keep up with that because of their rev rate. If they don't, that ball will bark and go high. Same thing when they get on the right lane, it's so tight down there, they have to make that move to the right. So it's almost a little bit tricky for them because of the rev rate. Tom Doherty's seen it all in just two rounds. He had to sit on the couch of shame for a little while yeah, after rolling the seven. He's riding momentum right now, I guarantee you. He lived with a seven. Doherty, he's heading to round four. He knows what that lane's doing. Next time he's up on the right lane, he's going to make an adjustment. He certainly will. That's why, you know, he's a future Hall of Famer. A little more aggressive. More than 40 minutes between the shots. <laughs> 40 minutes between shots. Yeah, a lot of the players actually said that that was their biggest obstacle, is the time in between shots. That was my biggest obstacle when I played in this format. I'll tell you what, it is forever. There are no practice shots for any of the players in between their shots. It gets better and better as we get uh, farther along because we eliminate a lot of the players. But those first three rounds, it's a long wait. Here's A.J. Johnson. Said it, he won the Storm Lucky Larson Masters in Sweden. He's got momentum. He feels like he can make a run at this thing. But he's got a nine, so he'll join Belinda Maple. She's got oh, look at her. some company. <laughs> she's she's <laughs> wiping off a spot for him, right? She's, she's, she's clearing a spot. All right, all right. The thing about it is, when somebody joins you on the couch, right, you feel good right. because you at least know you got another shot at it. Exactly. No doubt. <laughs> the, the, the last thing you want to do is have an empty spot on the couch next to you. <laughs> Yeah, well, that applies to life. <laughs> yes. Oh, and guys, the more the merrier. <laughs> Let's turn to Mr. Peters. Jake Peters, back-to-back -back strikes to start. Can he make it three? He does. Sir. He's got it cooking. You know, we talk a lot about these great fans here, guys, here at Bayside, the great facility, and Charlie Mitchell and his crew. But, uh, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the town. You know, oh. a lot of my friends back home say, hey, Randy, you travel a lot. You go, what, what's your favorite stop? Where do you like to go? And I said, Portland, Maine. I said, it's beautiful. Last night, John,
He got initiated. Pitch and a prayer, baby. We took him over to Jay's Oysters, and he got the lobster special. Hold that thought. Uh oh, more company. Oh, that's three nines. More company. Danielle so, McEwen has spent a lot of time on that couch. So, Norm, Jay's Oysters, he gets the lobster special, right? I love yeah. it. That, Jay's Oysters on a boat. That, that it's on a boat. Yeah. That table. That table looked like deadliest catch. It was incredible. Here's Lenny Boris Jr. And we talked about the fact that not only has he had a Hall of Fame career, but he oversees the pro shop at Castle Lanes. He literally gives 24-7, 365 to bowling. And I know he talks about your influence on him. Yeah, you know what? I, I, I never saw that I had an influence on him because he always ran me over. But he tells me about it now that I'm finished, you know, and I, I at least appreciate the fact that, uh, you know, he's got good things to say about me and watch this shot lay down when he needs it. Otherwise, he's on the couch. Norm and I competed a lot against uh, Lenny on the senior tour, and, and I, I will concur with what Norm is saying. Guy, he was he was one of the, the guys to beat each and every week. He made every show, yeah. There we go. Back to Derek Kindig. Garrett's been perfect so far. The data engineer Man. is perfect. Again. Pretty impressive. Well, we said to him earlier this week, is this the most pressure you've ever felt? He goes, look, the day I got married and the day I had to do the ceremony for my sister-in-law, those were harder days than just playing ball. Yeah, and I would agree with him. Yeah, of course. So Kindig's feeling good. Again, where we stand, You've got Belinda Maple, A.J. Johnson, as well as Danielle McEwen, all with nines. That's the low score right now. Oh, that's kind of low. Oh, oh. oh. oh no. what's the couch empty? The couch yeah. empty. That couch just cleared out. It cleared out so quick. <laughs> oh, Verity. Oh. All right, I'm going to go down there with the crowd. I'm going to make certain that somebody gets this Duke T-shirt. And maybe I'll stand behind that couch and give Verity a little rub down. You're going to do that right now? Right now, okay. yes, sir. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll hold the fort. Okay. Norm Duke is off to the couch. Hey, John. Yes, Randy. Duke has left the booth. Duke has left the booth. Liz Johnson. Great shot, Liz. Is heading to round four. Hey, and just real quick, we'd like to thank our partners at League Pals, who provided full standings and stats live scoring and leaderboards for the 2023 PBA LBC National Championship. Thank you, folks. Liz Johnson, she's a huge Buffalo Bills fan. Boo. <laughs> you heard me. Yeah, we know where you side with the Finns. Go Finns. Hunter Lawless, he's been that last man in each of these rounds. And that's seven. Oh, and he is heading home. Talk about throwing out a life jacket. Wow. Just, Just like, like that. I was going to say that. Well, he's been going really, really straight with a ball that doesn't react a whole lot. And this time he got, he got caught, got it inside, and the ball just laid there, went right through the face. And it's the 4 6 7. Kimberly's with Hunter now. So Hunter, how unexpected was that seven? Um, I threw a little inside, so it went harder into the head pin, but it is what it is. One shot, everybody throws one shot, and I left a little extra than everybody else. How much was that downtime affecting you? Because it was quite a while. Definitely, yeah. Uh, the breaks in between kind of get a little stiff, and but oh well, it is what it is. Had fun while I was here, so. That's all that matters. Congratulations on making this fun. He'll always be the chef to us though, right? He'll always be the chef. Off to the kitchen. 22 years of age, Hunter Lawless. He'd like to join the PBA Tour. That's the goal. For now, he's heading home in the clash. Round four next. Verity Crawley rolled an eight in round number three. She was on the couch of shame, but not for long because Hunter Lawless 
the last man to bowl each of these rounds to start this PBA LBC National Championships. Clash that look by the chef. Says it all, a great effort, but he is heading home. Belinda Maple will lead us off in round four. She's led us off each round, and she has been fantastic. A pair of strikes, a nine, really impressive from Belinda, who currently is pursuing a PhD. A PhD in organizational leadership. She wants to be a motivational speaker. Oh no. That, oh no. That is not gonna get past this round. To the couch of shame. Belinda, our qualifier from the women's handicap division, only averages about 150. So what she did in those first three frames were pretty extraordinary. Yep. And instead here, a three. So three is the score to beat. And again, folks, in this national championships clash, Tom Doherty in round two, he was on the couch of shame. After rolling a seven, he's on to round five with a strike. They can make noise. I, I felt confident. Three the score to beat. Well, you pretty much locked it in there, RP, as we take another look at Doherty on the score to beat and and that that, that score there's nothing it's going to be lower than that. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't mean any disrespect, but right. we need to hit the fast forward button because the rest of the players remaining are gonna get more than three. And that's the sad reality for Belinda. But what an honor, what, just having her here, and what a great person. We met her the other day and talking with her and everything that she's accomplished. And that's what this tournament affords, it affords all walks of life, all bowlers of every skill level. She is writing a book. The book is going to be called Drive, using the parts of a car to explain your drive. And I think her story is something that everybody can relate to in this PBA LBC National Championships clash. She decided last minute that she was going to come out to Wisconsin and compete from Columbia, South Carolina. She drove as Peters hits a nine. She drove all the way from South Carolina to Wisconsin to make sure that she got on the board, that she posted a score to get here. She said, I had that drive. And what a great experience for her as well, right? I mean, bowling on television, bowling with uh, men and women professionals and all the other competitors. I mean, that's what makes this tournament. That's what makes it special. Eight-time PWBA Tour title winner, Danielle McEwen is on to round five. Again, folks, three of the score to beat. McEwen, after spending two rounds, two of the four on the couch, she's still standing. Eight-time winner on the PWBA Tour with two majors is Danielle McEwen. So Lenny Boris Jr., we asked him yesterday, so if you win this thing, what will you do? He goes, well, I'd like to go on vacation. He said, where? He goes, wherever my wife wants to go. Yeah. Now that's the perfect time to leave a pocket 710. <laughs> right there. His wife, Jackie, can continue to look online at potential trips because he's heading to round five. Yet yeah, there's never been a better time for this because it doesn't matter. All you need, folks, is, yeah. He's never been happier to see that. All you need is four. Derek Kinding, three strikes. Make it four, he is on a mission. Locked in. There's Miss Maple. Verity Crawley just has to be three to move on. She survived last round. She had a score of eight. She was sitting. She was thinking, I'm going home, back to England. And instead, Hunter Lawless helped her out. Not as many nerves this time for Crawley. Whoa. Nine will do. Look at that outside there. Two and a half, four down lane. 16 to two, 14 across, and then got to get back to that 17 and a half four to hit the pocket. Using two different bowling balls as Verity. Right 
Now here's Liz Johnson. And just Randy, pen, just pencil it in. Just think about the fact we're in we're with bowling royalty with Liz Johnson, six-time U.S. Women's Open champion, yeah. ten majors on the women's side in the strike. Belinda Maple is heading back to South Carolina. Thank you, Belinda. It was fun. The GOAT, piping it up, second arrow. A well-deserved applause for Belinda Maple. She became a crowd favorite because she said she wants to inspire the youth. Just keep growing bowling. Kimberly's with her. Belinda, oh, this crowd absolutely loves you, and for good reason. You have been such a joy to be around while you have been here. What do you take away from this experience? Oh, it's been wonderful. I got to meet all these wonderful bowlers that I've watched on TV all my life. Oh my God, thank you for this experience. Thank you for this platform. Thank you for bowling. And um, I just love it and I hope everyone enjoys themselves and I wish these guys the best of luck. And I know that you love to inspire and motivate people. So what would you just say to anybody out there that wants to come here and do this next year? Oh, do it. Just go. Just do it. Join a league. Bowl. It's fun. Uh, do it. Yeah. Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> exactly what she said. Linda, thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, John, not to mention, in quoting Mr. Wonderful, and there's money. Lots and lots of money. Each competitor here the, of the 12, each of them get at least $3,000 from competing today. And again, you can enter at pba.com slash LBC tournament to start registering for 2024. That's right, this national championship will be back next year. We have eliminated four players. Eight remain for that $60,000 grand prize and the Duke Trophy. Round five, next. Welcome back to beautiful Portland, Maine. We are at Bayside Bowl. And folks, joining a league at any Bolero or AMF center comes with free membership into the PBA League Bowler Certification Program, which includes a discounted entry fee into the upcoming 2024 PBA LBC National Championships, digital awards, access to real-time stats, and much more. Go to Bolero.com today to learn more. Yes, folks, you can get a discount entry fee into next year's PBA LBC National Championships. That registration is open. We are entering round five with eight competitors left. Belinda Maple, Carlson Chambers, Trey Henricksmeyer, Hunter Lawless all heading home. And so Tom Doherty, who was on the couch of shame in round two with a seven, he survived. He leads us off in round five. Oh, wow, look at that thing peel back. TD. Rob Stone's favorite bowler right there. Bringing it back from way over there. Rebel. This is what power will do for you. Power rotation. Look at Tom kicking that 10 out. A little Jackie Chan style right there. <laughs> so you go from Tom Doherty here now to AJ Johnson. One PBA tour title on his career, nine years professionally. Six-time runner-up on tour before winning his first career title at the Storm Lucky Larson Masters. AJ's too young to have any type of gray in his beard. Just saying. <laughs> AJ, no gray here. Woo! Get that five out of there, baby. <laughs> no, I ain't going out of Get that five out of here, Randy. Come on, Jake. So you have two strikes to start us off in round number five. And now here's Jake Peters. Jake Peters, his strategy hit the pocket every shot he throws, get that nine or better. Well, he 
He's got a nine, but he's got to sit on the couch. The chase of malaise. <laughs> Just keep him coming. Nobody gave that to you. Uh, oh, boy. So for now, Jake Peters has to sit and watch. Nine's a score to beat. Danielle McEwen's been living life on the edge. The pin you want to watch here for Danielle is the one far right. And as that 10 pin goes down, Danielle usually strikes. Two-time major champion in the PWBA. Good one right here. This is what we call high flush in the business, John. She's a two-time runner-up for PWBA Player of the Year to Shannon O'Keefe. Now back to Lenny Boris Jr. Lenny making all of us old guys proud. Keep going, Lenny. His wife, Jackie, told you about their vacation. He's got five career PBA 50 tour titles. He's got a strike. He's heading to round six. Hall of Famer. So back to Derek Kindig. And this guy hasn't missed. Nope. Derek Kindig with four strikes. Hey, what happened to Norm? <laughs> Where is Norm? Where is he? Where'd he go? There he is. <laughs> Randy, how'd you miss him? <laughs> the, the thing was, you were actually looking for him. Oh, oh no, Derek Kindig yeah, is off to the couch. Talk about the kiss of death. He hasn't missed yet, seven. Maybe Norm should come back to the booth. <laughs> it's like, where's Waldo? And there, <laughs> Norm's head pops up. <laughs> yeah, sorry about this, man. I didn't mean to, to talk you into getting that seven count. Dang. You were actually looking for him. Uh, seriously. And how many times is the guy that the com competition's named after and the trophy's named after, he was just with the fans? Norm always knows where the camera is. There oh. it is. Crowley with a strike. Easy. Easy. Very flirting with the big four there. Hey, this is result based. That's all that matters. Watch, watch, watch. Big four standing. Big four go bye bye. Yep, yep. See that reaction, John? She knows it. It's funny listening to her talk about her win at the Grand Rapids Classic earlier this year. She said that came after her worst performance. It's incredible. Maybe of her career. That's how fast things can turn around in this sport. This competition moves fast. Liz Johnson is moving on. She's been nails. Shocker. Derek Kindig has been eliminated. And Derek Kindig is heading home. Good run, though. Got it. One bad shot. See ya. That's the nature of this competition. This is Liz Johnson's bread and butter. Down and in, right at him. That's why she's going to be tough throughout the rest of this competition. There's Norm again. Where in the world is Norm Duke? He's signing autographs, he's taking selfies. He's on our cameras and on FaceTime with somebody at the same time. It's Norm Duke's day. It's National Championships Clash Day. We've said goodbye to five. Seven remain. 60Ks on the line, folks. Welcome back to the 2023 PBA LBC National Championships Clash. Earlier today, PBA Commissioner Tom Clark, as well as the legend, the Hall of Famer, Norm Duke, they presented each competitor with a glass replica of the trophy. This is so cool for you to interact with all these people. Everybody loves you. Well, I tell you what, when you're holding $60,000 to the champion, they sure do feel a lot better about you. And I, you know, I, such an honor to be around all of the finalists. And all of the division winners got that replica glass Duke trophy. And so they already have one. They're looking for two. Yeah, this is serious business. $60,000. Each of the 12 gets $3,000 at least. Second place, 10. But 60 
grand. This is life changing for these competitors. Yeah, and we're down to all pros now, guys. Uh, Lenny Boris representing the senior tour. Yep. You have two women from the PWBA tour and then our, our three PBA uh, stars. Um, you know, talking with Danielle and Verity, if they were to win, it'd be their biggest paycheck in the sport of bowling ever. All these bowlers here today are probably open to some good advice. You guys have been giving out advice throughout the week. So we sent Kimberly Presler out to find some from our PBA pros. It's Pressing Questions presented by Go Bowling. Tom, what's the best advice that you've ever been given? Could be for bowling, could be for life, but something that stuck with you. Um, bowling, a long time ago uh, as a teenager, someone I looked up to back home told me that uh, during, you know, in the, in the clutch time, you have to want to strike more than you don't want to miss. I heard a quote one time and it says, I don't want to mess it up, it's um, speak only to improve upon the silence. And I, I like that a lot. It was actually from uh, Dr. Dean, uh, Dr. Dean Hennitz. He's a sports psychologist. And he was like, you know, you can wake up and choose to be happy and it'll change the entire outlook of your day, your life, everything. So every morning when I wake up, it doesn't matter what's going on, I just put on a smile and I'm like, I'm gonna be happy today. Marshall, what's the best advice you've ever been given? You know, uh, actually this one's a good one that's been resonating with me. It's uh, keep your eye on the prize, but don't lose sight of the experience. It's a quote I heard from Junior Gold my first couple of years, and it just makes sense. Kevin, what's the best advice that anyone's ever given you? Uh, it's actually gonna be the first advice that comes to my head is from Belmo, and he said there's no time limit on what you're doing in life. You know, there's no timeline. If you do something a little later than other people, it's no big deal, there's no rush on living life. And uh, that hit home for me, actually, because where I'm at in life versus a lot of my close friends, I'm uh, in a little bit different place, and it's not a bad thing. So that's my best advice that I've gotten. So thanks, Remo. Jason, what's the best advice you've ever received? Could be for bowling, could be for life. My grandmother, not that long ago, actually, um, she looked me right in the eyes and she said, you've made enough children. You have four. That is enough. Good advice. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> Belmo. Oh wow. Norm, your best piece of advice ever. Uh, you get out of it exactly what you put into it. That's the advice that I just walked with forever. And it, it gave me that uh, work ethic that Beautiful. I needed. Beautiful. Mine was uh, do on to others and then run. <laughs> okay, actually, in the sport of bowling, and it's so simplistic, it was know your game. Think about it. Know your game? Knowing your game. I know your game. <laughs> yeah, well, I, sometimes I didn't. Mine was to stop putting your quarterback's life in danger. Get off the scout team and head to the booth. I like it. There's a collection wow. of advice to all these players. Who's going to hoist the Duke trophy and win that 60K? The National Championship Clash continues next. Championships Clash. We're at Bayside Bowl in beautiful Portland, Maine. Another great crowd on hand to crown a national champion in the Clash. We started the day with 12 competitors. This competition, folks, was held throughout the summer. Seven weekends throughout the summer in Wisconsin. Over a thousand bowlers. Now as we head into round six, we're down to seven. John Fanta, Norm Duke, Randy Peterson with you. So Norm, Tom Doherty gets us started in round six. Yeah, and he hasn't had any practice shots in a long time. Nine. Nine is the score to beat. And he's happy with that right now. I'll tell you what, he's got to sit on the couch briefly. And he may, he may get eliminated, but I'll tell you what, right now I'd take nine. A lot of time in between the last shot he threw and this one. Yeah, and that's the big problem is, you know, we're not used to taking 10 minutes off and then coming out and throwing a shot for $60,000, and that's what they're doing. What would you do with that type of a gap? I would run in place. I would do, you know, most of these, these pros have been doing that. They've been keeping loose in any way they can without a bowling ball. Here's A.J. Johnson. 
AJ has to beat nine. He knew it. A fist pump for AJ Johnson. Yeah, and you can tell how, you know, relieved they are because they know they just are not loose right now. I mean, even EJ, or AJ fell off of that shot right there. You can see the, yeah. the little balance issue. And it's just because of the time involved between shots. It's, it's like an eternity. Yeah, and it's not like you're playing five shots and then taking the time. You're right, pulling right. one. Right. Jake Peters back at it. Won the PBA League All-Star Clash. Last year, first on PBA's Northwest region points list this year, and he's first here. Knows he's heading to round number seven because nine is that score to beat. Another nice shot by Jake Peters, but you know, doherty has been on that couch before. Yeah, he was sitting on the he, couch with seven. Though. Yeah, he knows how it feels. Trey Henricks Myers, the reason why Doherty ended up surviving. Here's Danielle. McEwen. Oh boy, she's back on the couch. She's been there before. Hey Norm, you hear that? Yeah. Somebody's knocking at the front door. I think it's. I think company's here. Well, I tell you what, we've got a couch that's filling up. Here's the thing, Danielle McEwen. Remember, she had to just survive round one. Yeah. She had to. She spent more time on the couch than anybody else. Yeah. I think. Roll off with Carlton Chambers twice. This man spent no time on the couch. The Hall of Famer. Lenny Boris Jr. is back at it. He's heading to round seven. Get him, Lenny! This guy is such a great story. And he just He's gave it play. the Duke pose right there. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. boy, yeah. Lenny Boris. The age of 61. Yeah, I got down there a little quicker than he did, though. Yeah, and you got up a lot faster, too. <laughs> Verity Crawley, right back in America on Wednesday. Ready to win 60K. That'll help. Verity Crawley. She's finding her mojo. You love her game and her upside. It's one of the best games on, out on their tour. No, there's no question about it. You can just tell. She just oozes with talent and confidence because of it. You Randy, build a game like that, you're going to be confident. Randy Menden the nicest way he could by saying, hey, you've won two titles, but I think you could have more. Yeah, it's like, hey, only two titles? And she's like, well, at least I want to. I'm like, yeah, but you should have 10. Tom no, Doherty and Danielle McEwen are sitting on that couch with nine. Liz Johnson is now joining them for a roll-off. Ring the bell. <laughs> There's nothing that you dislike more in Bayside than hearing the bell when you're up. You know, you don't want a bell. No. <laughs> no. And only at the National Championship Clash can you have a major champion in a roll-off. Good? Nobody oh, yeah. likes to hear the bell. <laughs> the bell. Only in the National Championships Clash can you have one roll and you're a major champion, where if it doesn't go well, you're going home. Oh, my God. Tom oh. Doherty. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You're surviving. Well, maybe. I think the expression says it all. That shot right there by Doherty. Oh my God. <laughs> You're right. If McEwen and Johnson are able to roll tens, he's got to get back out there. McEwen! Oh boy. And now she has all the pressure on her, and Liz Johnson has that score of nine to beat. Filthy animal. Solid nine for McEwen, ball's perfect in the pocket. She's not even playing a whole lot of angle either, and the ball goes right by the nine. No, but that's what Bolin does when one person gets extremely lucky. The next shot you see down the lane, oh my goodness. He just never seemed to get away with it. Liz Johnson, 11-time gold medalist with Team USA. Can she survive? She's heading home. The GOAT is heading home.
Didn't see that coming, no. Norm. No one did. No one did. That's the clash. That is the clash. And listen, you don't win 10 major championships by going up there and throwing your worst shot when you need it. This lady usually just throws it pure. And a head shake from Liz Johnson. Kimberly is with the 10 time major champion. Now, Liz, I saw the disappointment on your face over there, but you are smiling because you are such a good sport. It's the first time that you were sitting on the bench over there. What yeah. happened? Yeah, I just I grabbed it too much and just tried to try to force it a little bit and just instead of letting it go and it, it just showed it wasn't a great shot. So well, we are always happy to have you here. Thanks Thank for you so much. Thanks. Thank you, Portland. Thanks, Bayside Bowl. Hey, Kimberly, she's only smiling on the outside. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Liz Johnson, a goat Man. on the women's side, but that's the clash. You could be heading home early. Six eliminated, six remain. championship is on the line. The Duke Trophy in its inaugural edition is at stake and $60,000 is your purse. Liz Johnson just unfortunately going home. So here we go. Tom Doherty, AJ Johnson, Jake Peters, Danielle McEwen, Lenny cow. Boris Jr. and Verity Crawley. But I tell you what, that's a group of pros right there. Mm -hmm. All of them have been here before. What are you thinking here, Randy? I'm thinking it's going to be interesting to see what kind of shot Doherty throws here. He's thrown a lot of different ones. Let's see. He loves it. Yeah. He should. That was a good one. When he's at his best, what is he doing? When he's at his best, he posts shots, he creates motion and shape, and he strikes a ton. You know, we saw it, I think, what, 2021 when he just owned the World Series of Bowling in Tampa. Right, plus he does not use a thumb hole, and therefore, at the bottom of the swing, he is so clean always. He's never dragging out of the thumb. Nope. He doesn't have one. Well, he has a thumb. Well, he just he doesn't use it. <laughs> yeah, and, and let's clarify, maybe for our first-time viewers. Norm. Yeah, well, he has a thumb. He doesn't have a thumb hole. <laughs> A.J. Johnson. One PBA Tour title. Ninth year pro, and he's feeling good. No couch for A.J. <laughs> Johnson has a strike in six of seven rounds. Yeah, I tell you what, he's been posting them up. The only time he didn't post up, he uh, he left nine. But I tell you what, all of the pros like the left lane better than they do the right lane. So we may see just a roll off here of all strikes. Just saying. Jake Peters. Somebody's going to get tapped. Somebody's going to leave nine. They're going to hit the pocket, and they're going to leave nine. Peters with a strike. He wants an RV. That's what he's getting if he wins this thing. Nothing better than Cousin Eddie. Nothing that you could say to that. It's I'm true. Done, you know, <laughs> I'm done. it's true. Uh, and Randy Peterson has RV experience, folks. Yeah, that was a nightmare. You were always the bathroom maintenance man. Yeah, I was waiting for National Lampoon to come call. Daniel McEwen. Oh, Daniel McEwen! Right. Maybe we will have a I, pair of round sevens. I got two more shots left, Norm, I think. Well, I've never seen Lenny Boris miss lifetime, so you only have one, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I say that. That's a kiss of death on Lenny. I'll back that out and yeah. let, let him throw it, and we'll just watch. I'll tell you Let's what, see. though. This guy knows how to bowl under pressure. Yes, he does. His parents were bowlers. His stepdad, Bob Larson, a Wisconsin State Hall of Famer. Lenny, the Hall of Famer himself this year. Never doubt Lenny. Never doubt him. That's a bulldog. Hanging in there. That's exactly right. He is a bulldog. I couldn't have said it better, Randy. I mean, the only thing that's changed with Lenny Borsch over the years is that backswing's gotten a little bit lower, but I'll tell you what, 
Talk about guaranteed rate strike of the day. Go ahead, John. The strike of the day is sponsored by guaranteed rate. Want to get moving fast with same day mortgage? You can go from application to approval in as little as one business day. And Verity Crawley is heading home with a nine. How harsh is that? That's okay, good one. Oh, she threw that so good. Yes, and Superwoman is now gone. Thank you. Good luck. Oh. Felt like she had her game in the right place. Once well, she does. Look at this. She just posted that up. She's probably standing about a half a board further left than she should, but you're moving every time you throw a shot because there's so many, yep. so many players in between, and, and there's there's traffic. Kimberly is with Verity now. So Verity, I know a lot of people watching this go, oh, it's just one shot. How hard could it be? But truly, how hard is this event when you only have one shot? It's hard because you can't control whether the pins fall or not. All you can do is make the best shot possible, and sometimes it doesn't fall. All right, well, thank you so much for your time and for being here. Thank you. Verity Crowley put on a show, but she is heading home. Five remain every weekday. Catch the most fearless voice in sports, Colin Coward, along with co-host Jason McIntyre for a bold, unique, and outspoken perspective on the day's biggest stories, The Herd. Weekdays at noon Eastern on FS1, Fox Sports app. I love what you just said, Norm, as they switch lanes. Yes. There's so much traffic. Really no opportunity to get in any sort of a rhythm. No rhythm, of course not. And because of the traffic, you don't know what other players' bowling balls do into the lane pattern. It's doing something. You kind of have a, 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 an idea, but you never know. So it's guesswork. Better, better rhythm's coming. Yes. Tom Doherty has found some mojo. Better rhythms coming, less players, faster pace. Less traffic. Less traffic, more of what the players are used to. I'll tell you though, this right lane does not give away strikes like the left one does uh, throughout the year, so I do not believe we're gonna have all strikes. There it is. Of course, I got it wrong last time too, Randy. <laughs> I got lucky. You did. <laughs> Luck or not, these players said it's okay to be lucky in the clash. Yeah, no, I'm I can't, fine with that. Can't believe Tiger Woods threw it out of bounds for sure. <laughs> AJ Johnson with an eight. Now oh, you're one for two. You know what? I just got 50-50 yeah. at uh, AJ Johnson's expense. Sorry about that, AJ, but take a seat on that couch. That, that right lane's starting to look a little wet dry, isn't it? A little yeah, it wiggles left of target, not right of right target. Right. And that's what you're saying is left of target, you think you want hold. He liked that. Yeah, but you get over hold yeah. right now. No friction down lane when you get it just a little bit inside of target on this right lane. Jake Peters loves his dogs, wants to buy that RV. He won the PBA League All-Star Clash. He looks like he's won a clash before, fellas. Yeah, he's been here before. Been there, done that. He knows what it takes. You got to execute and you got to have some things go your way. Yeah, you do. But can you imagine trying to go through 24 players in a row? I mean, he's already gone through 12. He's already gone through seven on this clash. That's 19 he's eliminated. Danielle McEwen. Well, if you're A.J. Johnson, you're not liking where you're sitting right now. No, no, A.J., I've been in exactly this spot before, and <laughs> I know how you feel, and it's never worked out so good for me. Now you're asking a Hall of Famer to get eight or less. Yeah. If you're A.J. Johnson. I don't see it happening. This is no regular Hall of Famer. This. It's Lenny Boris Jr. Yeah. The man spends his life all in bowling. Pro shop owner, Hall of Famer, heading to round nine. Dude, I think he's straight up AI. No doubt. I think he's AI. I think you're right. Lenny Boris Jr. is stone cold. And A.J. Johnson is heading home. Yeah, AI just sent you home. Norm. Kimberly is with A.J. AJ, so you made it all the way through the eighth round, but uh, now you're heading home. But what was it like being part of this inaugural event? 
Oh, this is great. Um, it would have been really cool to take home uh, the Duke trophy, especially in the place where he threw his last shot of, uh, of competition. Um, but, uh, but I definitely didn't give my best performance in that round. That was not very good. I'm just, that was bad. Um, but uh, but this, has been, uh, this has been great. I wish you know, nothing but luck to them. And um, no, it's just fun being here in Bayside and, and getting a ball on TV for this. And 60,000 would have been nice, would have paid for a lot of diapers. <laughs> Because he's got a baby on the way. Congratulations on that and for making it this far. Thank you. Well, diaper depression. Yeah, better him than me. Yeah. With the diaper part, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I went, I went, I, I, I did my time. Hey, supply chain made those suckers awfully expensive, though, so he's not getting as many as he thinks. <laughs> and then there were four. Who is going to raise the very first Duke trophy? Tom Doherty, Jake Peters, Danielle McEwen, Lenny Borish Jr. Pros, a Hall of Fame presence. What a lineup. The side who takes home $60,000. that three weeks from today, Sunday, October 22nd on Fox, we wrap up our coverage of the 2023 PBA Tour with the PBA Strike Derby, right here from Bayside Bowl in Portland, Maine. Check your local listings for the time in your area. Last year, Kyle Troop defeating Matt Ogle. That was an epic, epic showdown between those two as Tom Doherty steps back up. Rebel will lead us off with just four left. Let's take a look and more on top. Make your spares. Make your spares. Yeah, that doesn't help much in this format. Uh, I haven't seen a spare made today. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't shoot a lot of spares. Normally. normally, he doesn't have to. That advice is unapplicable at the clash. It's one shot, folks. We got four competitors left. Doherty, Peters, McEwen, and Boris. Doherty, wow. Tom Doherty, three consecutive strikes. Yeah, you can see that Tom Doherty now is getting his legs underneath him. I tell you what, when he gets confident, look out. Well, I guess all four of them, when they get confident, look out. But Tom's got more power than the rest of the field. Yeah, he's got the bigger ball, that's for sure. And I think right now, Norma, it's all about pace, right? It's all about rhythm and pace. And that, that's changed throughout this competition. It's getting much quicker, much faster now. Here's Jake Peters. 13th year as a pro, he's got a nine, he's heading to the couch. Well, you know, usually we've seen Danielle on the couch first, but we'll just put Jake Peters over there and see if he can, uh, see if he can attract any company. Well, Danielle McCune would like to avoid the couch. Our one female left in the clash two-time major champion. Won the U.S. Open in 2019, and Danielle McEwen, no couch for you. No, that was perfect. Cha-ching. And so now Jake Peters has to sit, and again, how fitting is it that you're sitting on Lenny Boris Jr.? I wouldn't want to be there. I've done this for the last eight or nine years on the senior tour, and you never went on the couch. Seen this movie. Ever. Lenny won the 2018 PBA 50 National Championship. Lenny Boris Jr. Like a fine wine! Sends Jake Peters home! The Hall of Famer is heading to round 10. Yeah, and who did he beat in the 2018 National Championship? Yeah, of course. I've seen that movie. Mm. The emotion of this event and knowing 60K and that Duke trophy is on the line. Kimberly is with Jake Peters. Well, Jake, I know this didn't end the way you wanted it to, but you did make the top four. So what was this experience like for you? 
Uh, it's it's brutal. Uh, it's uh, you know to essentially dating back to last year, survive like 18 rounds or whatever it was in this is is absolutely insane. I would have never guessed it, but uh, you know I, I threw a lot of good shots. Unfortunately, not uh, not make the right move when I needed to, and and these guys are too good to let you off. It's got to be a tough that you're going out with a nine, but you know what? You bowled really well today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Loved it. Thanks. Jake Peters heading home. Who's going to be in the 2024 PBA LBC National Championships? Registration is now open to bowlers of all skill levels. The PBA LBC National Championships is heading to a new location outside Chicago, Illinois, and includes two new junior divisions. You can compete in singles as well as optional doubles and team events. Even combine your scores with the pros. Enter today at PBA.com. Tom Doherty, Danielle McEwen, Lenny Boris Jr., Randy Peterson, give us a primer for these final three. I think there's an advantage that goes to Tom Doherty. He's got the bigger ball. He's got the left side of the lane to himself. He can keep moving deeper and create all that room with all that power that he has. And he's going to get the corners out. Three straight strikes. Make it four. That, that right lane is a little dirty. It's very tight down lane, and it has been that way since we, since Charlie Mitchell built this added on facility. And if you've got it, you've got it. If you don't, you get hang. The good news is Tom Doherty has the power to swish the rack when he's light. Get Other, it around the corner. Others may not. Let's see. I mean, if this ball doesn't go flush, it's got flat 10 written all over it, doesn't it, Norm? I would think. McEwen! Maybe not. Follow suit, Danielle McEwen. At that time, she snaps the 10 out, and that tells me that she got it out of her hand perfect. The ball had enough energy going through the pins. Yeah, and she got it to the right. If you get the ball to the right, you catch some hook. If you get it to the left, that's when you get all that wiggle and hang, and that's where we saw Trey, the 17 year old or the better of the two lanes, would you say it's the left lane? Oh, definitely. Okay. Has always been. Embrace the moment. Stay focused and process everything correctly. That's what Lenny Borish told us heading into this week. He said, I just want to get nine or better. But now he needs ten. He needs a strike to stay alive. There it is. Heading home. Lack of power in that lane. Lack of power on that lane will send you home. What an effort. And all class. You wouldn't expect anything different from that man. No, you no. wouldn't. And, and that's why we love him so much. Uh, how many years have we competed against Lenny? Uh, even, you know, his his, uh, his eagles. How many eagles? I don't know, but down to Kimberly. Lenny, you know what? You're coming off of five strikes, but this is the first time that you've ever done an event like this, so you have got to be proud that you made it to the top three. Would you ever do this again? I just want to know, do senior citizens get a mulligan or, or no? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, I would do it again. This was just a great experience. Would have been nice to, uh, you know, get through this next round, but best of luck to those guys. But thank you for having this event. It was awesome. You should be absolutely proud on how you did today. Thank you thank for being you. here. Thank you. Yeah! That applause says it all, folks. We started with over 1,000 competitors in the summer in Wisconsin. We came here today in Portland with a dozen. Now we're down to two. Tom Doherty versus Danielle McEwen for the Duke Trophy in 60K next. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Go Bowling. For friends and family fun, log on to GoBowling.com to find a center near you. By Guaranteed Rate. Want to move fast with Same Day Mortgage? You can go from application to approval in as fast as one day to get you closing on the home of your dreams in just 10 days. Learn more at Rate.com. And by Bolero, the number one place to bowl, party, eat, and play with over 340 locations nationwide. Head to Bolero.com today to find a center near you. This crowd is outstanding at Bayside Bowl in Portland, Maine. They're ready to crown the Duke, the 2023 edition.
the inaugural PDA LBC National Championship Clash. Randy Peterson, and then there were two. Tom Doherty, Danielle McHugh. Hard to believe, Do Doherty's almost 50 years old and eligible for the senior tour. The only thing that's been limiting Tom Doherty as of late is a bad back. Right now his back looks pretty good. Tom, father of three daughters and a son, Cody. Doing it for his family. Tom Doherty puts the pressure on McEwen. Great shot. 60 grand, folks, let's not forget, $60,000 in this inaugural event. Runner-up gets $10,000. Danielle McEwen said if she won this, it'd be her biggest payout ever. She said, this sounded like such a cool event. I had to get to Wisconsin for it. I had to be a part of this. Now she's one of two standing. McEwen. Over. The Rebel is your national champion. Tom Doherty is king of the clash. Well, Tom Doherty survived that one very first round, and then he parlayed it into 60K. From the couch to being crowned. Excuse me, it was the second round that Tom had to dodge. Remember the youngster um, let him off the hook with six when hurt. Tom left that seventh count. But Tom Doherty survives. You won the first one, my man, and way to go. Big time win for TD. Kimberly Pressler is with them. I know. We got some very excited guys down here. Norm with the trophy presentation. Tom Doherty, winner of the inaugural Duke. Yeah. Congratulations. I tell you what, that was so exciting. I'm happy for you. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Enjoy, Thank my you. friend. Thank you. It's a little heavy, Norm. It's very heavy. <laughs> is it heavy? Uh, it's it's very heavy. Uh, I never thought I'd be standing next to somebody holding their likeness. It's not much smaller, but. Um, <laughs> well, let's talk about good. this, about what happened today, because after you were on the couch, you were almost eliminated with that seven. You came over to me during the break, and you said, I thought for sure I was going home. And now you find yourself in the winner's circle. How did you turn all that around? Yeah, it, it mean, it, it took a lot of pressure off me because I felt like I was on a free roll after that. I, I thought for sure. I thought maybe someone would throw a bad shot, but uh, they're still likely to get more than seven. So I was fortunate enough to, to get by that round. And then once I did, I was definitely calmed down after that. And then um, you're the first person to take home this dude. Go ahead, show the crowd how amazing this is. He's like, I can't even pick it up, it's so heavy. So you're the first person to go home with this. So what's it like, the fact that you get to take this home? Uh, there's no way I can take this trophy home. This belongs in Bayside, so it's going to stay here for all the bowlers to look at. Congratulations on the win, Tom. That is the satisfying moment of the match, sponsored by Snickers. Nothing satisfies like a Snickers. And nothing satisfies quite like that for Tom Doherty. How cool is that, Randy, that the trophy will stay right here at Bayside? Uh, yeah. Um, God. I wasn't speechless. Worried. Speechless. Um, what a great gesture by Tom Doherty. And if you want to be a part of this next year, why wouldn't you want to be? Yeah, why wouldn't you? Registration for the 2024 PBA LBC National Championship is now open to bowlers of all skill levels. It's heading to a new location outside Chicago, Illinois. Two new junior divisions as well. Enter today at PBA.com. A reminder that our coverage of the 2023 PBA Tour continues in three weeks. Sunday, October 22nd on Fox with the PBA Strike Derby right here from Bayside Bowl in Portland, Maine. Tom Doherty is your PBA LBC National Champion of the Clash. Coming up next on FS1, it's Major League Soccer as LAFC host Real Salt Lake. For Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler, Norm Duke, and our entire crew, I'm John Banta. You have been watching the PBA on FS1. Tom Doherty is your king.